Live Laugh Larceny discusses true petty crimes that may be disturbing to some. Or could be easy listening to all you psychopaths out there. All stories are based on actual events. Eh, but details may vary. Listener discretion is not advised. Welcome to Live Laugh Larceny, when a social interaction ruins your day. (laughs) This is Trevin. And I'm Amanda. And before we get into our dreadful dilemmas this week, this is the first episode that I'm recording with my pink hair. Yes. And I just wanted to give basically a handful of our listeners just a great big thank you because I've gotten so many nice messages about it. Yeah, there was a lot of kind words. Yeah. You know, I was a little self-conscious on whether or not I could pull off pink hair. You know, I'm a mom of two. I'm in my 30s now. And I just wanted to have some fun, but everyone's been so nice and supportive about it. Yeah, everybody's been really cool about you expressing yourself and just doing your own thing, which I think we all should be, you know, that way for everybody on that kind of a thing. Totally, totally. So I just appreciate it. It might honestly already be faded out of my hair by the time this episode comes out since we're recording ahead because we're about to go on our trip. But but yes, I just wanted to put that out there. Now, Trevin, Mm -hmm. what is your dreadful dilemma? So I've got a dreadful dilemma, and I think you're aware of it. Yes, I am. So the saga of Barking Mabel and the shitty neighbors continues. On Monday of this week, Emily and I were getting ready to work out, and we heard our ring doorbell go off. And before we could even really react, we saw some movement, because we were down here in the studio getting ready to work out, and we saw somebody walk by the windows So there was this man who was like ringing our doorbell and then like walking around our house, which is like, okay, don't walk around my house. Ew, he was walking around? Yeah. I mean, he didn't fully go around. So anyway, I go up there and I answer the door. I'm like, yeah, what do you want? And so this guy kind of like steps back. He wasn't making eye contact with me. It was really weird. He was like looking at my knees. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah. And he was just like, hey, um, I'm the neighbor from up the way. And what, what can we do about the dog? And I really just wanted to be like, oh, you're that house. You've met his wife that complained, but you haven't met him? Mainly they've been dealing with Emily. Oh, okay. But I was kind of in the, I was standing behind Emily at one point when she was talking to her, but they haven't had to talk with me. And so I'm like, yeah, dude, we're trying to work on it here. We limit her time outside. And he goes, oh, well, you're allowed to have her outside. I just don't want her to bark. Uh, And I'm thinking, oh. Oh, I'm allowed, am I? I'm allowed in my house to do something with my dog, can I? Hmm. Oh, my God. But he said, oh, she was barking all day and my wife works from home. And it just really, like, people on the phone can ask, like, what's the deal with the barking dog and stuff like that? And apparently, I guess Emily heard it and I didn't hear him say it. But apparently he said that she works in the garage. I mean, if I'm in the garage, I can hear the outdoors a lot better. Yeah. Go work in a room. Why are you in your garage? There are two people. She has a kid, but they don't live with her. He lives with the dad, I guess. Okay. So you have a good size house and you're just two people. They made a point to say, we don't have pets. So it's like, <laughs> oh my God. what the hell is your house full of that you can't put an office in your actual house? Yeah, because it's a decent sized house. It's just down there, right? Yeah. yeah. And so. Wow. I That's was, really weird. <laughs> I was still just trying to keep myself small and not take up too much room. And I'm like, listen, dude, I'll do what I can, but we're really trying for you. And then Emily comes up behind me and she's like, oh, is this about the dog? He's like, uh, yeah. And Emily just straight up like bitchy woman style was just straight up like, um, no, that's not the case. I wasn't even home today. And then when I did let her out, it wasn't even for very long. So that's not true. And the guy was just like, well, my wife said it was barking all day. And she's like, that's not the case. He's like, so you're not going to do anything? And we're like, what can we do? You're wrong. Yeah. Your wife's just exaggerating the amount of what she thinks she's hearing. So it's like, of course, we're going to continue to try to be good neighbors in this neighborhood. But no, I'm not going to like bend the knee and do whatever you're asking me to do. I don't know what more to do for you. And he like looked away and just said, 
okay and just like started walking away left it very open-ended and then emily just took one more little step and goes thanks for stopping by (laughs) and the funniest thing is this dude drove over to our house you're kidding me (laughs) he brought his big dodge ram truck pulled it into our driveway and then you're kidding me no so you're telling me that your wife can hear the dog barking from your house Mm-hmm. But you still have to drive over? Yeah. Give me a break. <laughs> I can throw a rock and hit your house from here. Why did you drive? Wow. It had to have been an intimidation tactic. Yeah. So, and I told him, I was like, oh, you can tell he's going to do something. Because it was more of a, you didn't do what I wanted to. You're going to be sorry. Ew. And Emily was like, nah, we'll just be better and we'll be fine. I'm like, no, he's going to call somebody. It's obvious. So we watched them get out of his truck and they sit and they smoke a bunch. So they sit on their front porch and they just watch the neighborhood. Ew. And I could see him smoking and pointing over at our house and like talking with his wife. And I said, they're going to call animal control again. Because I think I already talked about this once before. He already called animal control once before on us. Damn. Because of Mabel saying that it sounded like a dog in distress. Like we're not taking care of our oh animal. Oh my God. So, so this was on Monday night. Wednesday comes along and my ring goes off and I see two people from animal services at my door with like a box. What? And a box. When we had the call with cloud 10, we had to do it over zoom and I tried to zoom from my phone. And I couldn't. Yeah. So I ran and was like trying to connect to ring. Cause for some reason my internet's just not great at my job. Yeah. And so I'm like, wait hey hey don't go away and i saw the animal people walking away and stopped me like yeah hi it's the animal people and i said can you call me on my cell phone i really want to talk to you yeah and so they called me and i said hey this crazy woman this is the second time she sent you guys out you could tell he was probably new or a volunteer or something and he said please just call the main number and ask for a manager they'll do what they can So I called the management people and they said, hey, this is not a one-sided thing. I understand some people just aren't blessed with good neighbors. Yeah. This can happen. And they said, if this escalates, eventually they can't do anonymous tips anymore. They will have to give information and sign an affidavit. Damn! Saying that they can prove the times in which they had these complaints and then they'll have to dig into it further. Okay. And I said, please escalate it to that next point because these people are going to abuse your services more than they already have yeah because they said no matter what anytime they receive a call they have to go check it out and i love what you guys do yeah like i got boots from them yeah i support what you guys do you guys do a lot of great things for animals you shouldn't have to be wasting your resources for this yeah i know and so this petty bullshit and so my whole aim was just to be like hey because i know who these people are i said next time you call them just you know call them out on it like i know who it is it's no surprise to me yeah and the lady was like well a lot of people think they know who it is but it ends up not being right and i'm like you're like they came over here multiple times i said did they make the call monday night and she said actually no it was tuesday and i thought okay so that definitely proves it's them because we weren't home tuesday and mabel was in the house so they were stewing in it for 12 hours and then Mm -hmm. we're like fuck it i'm gonna call like nothing was going on tuesday from the call because we were like well we're gonna be better we've been keeping logs of how long we let mabel out because i want to be ready almost like going to court like i want to have documents that say my dog had 20 minutes of outside time today that is not a nuisance no these people are being really sensitive yep yep you just keep that documentation these people are crazy We've been messaging about this a little bit before today. And like, you know, you wouldn't think that they would go there like, nope, I'm going to do the affidavit. But these people are petty enough to go there. So I would be fully prepared Mm -hmm. because, yeah, I mean, if they're going to complain about this. And again, I'm a dog person. I have two dogs that bark a lot. Mm -hmm. And so our neighbors have always been beautifully gracious about them. So I just have a really hard time handling this because i know you guys are very considerate people yeah we don't like to be in the way of other people no you guys don't like confrontations you guys don't like being the pain in someone else's side you know like you guys just aren't those people so it just makes it even more ridiculous yeah i think they like the power that they have and just the way that he said oh you can let her out just don't let her bark and it's like uh, you can just tell that people like this think that they have the control or People should have to listen to what they want. Mm -hmm. And I will not do it. And Emily won't let me do petty things back. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I was trying to think of how you could get them back, but 
It was really hard to come up with something. I mean, it kind of ties back into whatever week it was last week, I think, when we talked about karma so much. I hope they get what's coming. <laughs> Me too. Ah, uh, well, I'm so sorry, Trevin. And uh, please keep us posted. I hope that you don't have any more dreadful dilemmas about this, but we'll see. So I also have a dreadful dilemma. Mm-hmm. It's been a minute since I talked about my older daughter, Lila. She is four years old. But I have something to share with all of you today. Mm. So the other day, we were driving to go pick up our Chinese food at our favorite Chinese place by our house. Oh, (laughs) now I want Chinese. (laughs) Sorry, I should not have put in that detail for you. I know that's like... You're killing me. That's like your cheat day food. So we were going to pick it up and Jordan ran in to get the food and the kids were in the back and I was just sitting in the front seat chilling and all of a sudden Lila was like, look, mama, look. And I looked in the back seat and I was like, what am I looking at? And she pointed at her window and she said, "Uh, look what I made you. And I looked at the window and she had drawn a couple of different rainbows with her spit. Oh. And, uh, you know, I was torn. I was torn with how to react to this because as a creative person myself <laughs> and as an artistic person, yes. I thought it was very resourceful of her. And I never want to get mad at her for being creative mm-hmm. and for drawing and creating art, you know. But at the same time, it's really gross, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I basically told her just that. I was like, wow, baby, those are really pretty rainbows. I love that you're making things for me. But using our spit on public surfaces is really, really yucky. So, like, let's not do that anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it was so funny because when Jordan came back in with the food and I told him, he immediately just wanted to be like, never do that again. But I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a man in vehicles. Yep, yep. I was like, I don't want (laughs) to make her think she can't create art or express herself. But yes, also don't do it again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, let's give you a different way to express yourself in the car. Maybe one of those... uh, the magnetic uh, oh, like the etch a sketch <laughs> magnetic drawing things yeah and she has some of those like man they never had these when i was a kid but they're so cool they're like the reusable almost like a coloring book but the marker thing is just filled with water like water just activates it mm-hmm. and then it's like all colorful and then it dries and you can do it over and over again how do you change the colors or does it just make the spot the same yeah, color it every just time? make no 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 it's like something in the paper already has different colors oh, okay. and water activates all of it so okay, I've seen that, yeah. they're so cool but yeah she has like all the those and all these other things and all these toys in the car but it's but not spit chose, i know i tried to get a picture of it because i knew it was going to be a dreadful dilemma <laughs> oh my god but it was really hard to photograph like a clear drawing on a clear window on a phone camera but i i tried could I tried. you imagine being like kid this isn't right don't do it hold on let me get a picture of it <laughs> i'm trying to tell you this isn't right but oh my god look at this i need this <laughs> I know. Like I said, it was such a mixed, mixed emotion. I could see that. But also pretty dreadful because, you know, ew. You don't want her to be leaving her spit art all over the world. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Now watch in like 20 years, she's going to be huge for spit art. I know. Like that might be like her thing. Mm -hmm. And if I would have just criticized her from the start and wouldn't have encouraged it even a little bit, it would have never happened. So maybe good parenting job for me, right? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So we are going to be doing a game of Would You Rather this week. Would You Rather. So, Trevin, Mm -hmm. did you notice that I brought in this cooler with me today? Cooler and trail mix. (laughs) We'll ignore the trail mix. Oh, is that just just for a road snack? (laughs) That's just for a road snack. That's a big-ass bag. You must be going for a road trip. (laughs) It's from Costco. (laughs) It's bulk size. But no, I brought in a cooler, and it kind of ties into my would you rather, and I can't fucking wait to do this. Oh, great. It's a good thing you're going first. (laughs) Close your eyes. Okay, but I'm not putting my hand in anything without looking. No, you're not. Don't worry. 
I'm going to give you a hint, okay? Uh -huh. Listen to this sound. Okay. So I'm going to ask the would you rather, and then you can open your eyes, okay? Okay. Would you rather drink grass soda or dirt soda? Ooh. Go ahead and open your eyes. <laughs> hmm. Probably grass. Okay. <laughs> you have to try it right now. I will try the dirt since you are trying the grass. Mowed and bottled in the USA. Yep. And mine says shoveled and bottled in the USA. I should have gotten a video of this. Are these not twist offs? I think they are. Yep. Uh, okay. Can you twist mine? Here we go. <laughs> that was the worst cheers ever. <laughs> okay. What does your smell like? Does it smell like... Does it smell like grass? It smells like nothing, but probably like grass. Mine kind of smells kind of like dirt, maybe. I don't know. Let's go ahead and try this. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. What does it taste like, Trevor? I actually don't mind it. You're kidding me. It's not that bad. Ugh. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, it's still got sugar in it, so. Does it taste like grass? Tastes like, I don't know, a weird flavor. You want to try it? Yeah, here. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have cooties. Now yours, it does kind of have a dirty flavor to it, but it's also <laughs> kind of got a root beer sort of flavor. I know. Mine tastes like a really bad root beer, but like with dirt in it. The grass one actually kind of has a bit of a artificial limey kind of taste to it. Yeah. But they're both not great. But they're not horrible either. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not like the uh, Harry Potter beans where it like tastes like an actual dump or something. <laughs> oh my god. So I got these from the local I think it's called Casey Soda Company. And it's in the river market and they have the <laughs> weirdest pop flavors, but they also have really, really delicious ones too. I've been to the one in Lawrence. Oh, okay. And that one's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my parents were out and about today and I've wanted to do something for a long time where it was a would you rather where you had to, I was thinking I was going to find really weird chip flavors, but mm -hmm. I just never did it. And I was like, oh, because they were over by the river market. I'm like, go get me some weird sodas today. And my dad called me and was like, okay, we got, there was a barf flavor. I was like, that's too far. Yeah, if it's acidy, I don't want that. Yeah, there was a enchilada one and a different kind of food. I, I thought about doing a food one. There was ketchup and mustard. There was a corn flavored one, which I've actually tried that one. It's so nasty. Weird. But I went with the dirt and grass, but overall... They're really better than I expected, but I wouldn't want to finish the whole bottle. I might finish grass. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a would you rather for me? <laughs> I do have a would you rather. Okay. And this is from a website called Ponly, Ponly, P-O-N-L-Y dot com. Okay. I was trying to come up with my own, but I want to save it because it's just not good enough for me yet. I got to make it better. So okay. I'm going to use this one. Would you rather... Take a bath in salad dressing or a shower in barbecue sauce? <laughs> okay. Why are these both food related or food and drink related? I have no idea. <laughs> I love it. Okay. A bath in dressing or a shower in BBQ. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go a bath in salad dressing just because I feel as though... If you were getting showered with barbecue sauce, there's a higher chance of it getting accidentally shot into your eye. Yeah. Seems a little more wild for me. And also, like, maybe if I was in the right mood and I had a honey mustard bath. I mean, that doesn't sound too horrible. Uh, imagine being, like, in a bath full of ranch <laughs> and then just having some wings to the side and just being like, ew, my body, <laughs> and just taking little bites of it. See, I love ranch, but I would not choose that to be the dressing of my bath. I'd go with, I think Italian's a little too runny, ranch is a little too thick. I think that the honey mustard vinaigrette dressing would be kind of this great medium texture, an okay-ish smell, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It sounded like I've really thought about this beforehand, but I swear it's just all coming to me now. Well, it sounds like you're just really feeling it. I can't <laughs> fault you for that. Which one would you do? I would do it the dressing too, even though I do have this fear 
if I'm just sitting in it for a long time, I don't want it to like get up inside me or anything. <laughs> But I do agree that if the barbecue sauce is coming at me with much pressure, it's a good chance of ricocheting <laughs> off my shoulders and going into my eyeball. Yes. Or... Yeah. I didn't even think about it going in you. Ah! <laughs> that would be so gross. You just have to clench everything that you've got mm -hmm. and just hope for the best. Yeah. You don't want like a ranch booty. <laughs> no, I really don't. Oh my God. Well, those would you rathers were very disgusting and weird. Agreed. but. We've made it through. <laughs> okay, so I have a story this week. This is another fairly recent news story. It took place in the year that we are recording this, which is 2022. Nice. So it's very recent. And what's funny is that usually I choose pretty obscure, weird news stories that a lot of times nobody's heard of. But once I told my husband, Jordan, I was like, oh, this is the crime story I'm going to tell this week. He's like, oh, I actually heard about that. Mm. I don't know where or why, but he did. So anyway, here we go. As we venture into the month of September, there is something sinister beginning. Scents of stale cake and moldy flowers consume the air while ominous church bells ring in the distance. A feeling of dread is felt throughout humankind as we collectively enter wedding season. There are many terrifying reasons why this time of year scares both wedding guests and soon-to-be-married couples. Guests are plagued with the task of picking out the proper wedding gift and the fear of arriving at the venue only to realize there isn't an open bar. This wedding sucks. By the time the future newlyweds make it to the wedding, they have already been to hell and back. They've offended countless family members by not including them in their wedding party. They've argued with each other over wedding colors and invitations and are both severely afraid that they are marrying someone like their parents. I've made a list of chores that I expect to be finished. After all of the worrying and stress from everyone involved, the day of the wedding finally arrives. This should be the moment when all the fears and worries wash away and are replaced with bliss, right? The petty crime I'll be telling you all today is about a wedding that went from romantic to panic. When guests received their wedding invitation for Dania Glenning and Andrew Subdova's wedding on February 19th in Longwood, Florida, they were excited. The pair was a gorgeous couple who always encouraged everyone around them to loosen up and have fun. Also, on the plus side of this event, there was indeed an open bar. The day of the anticipated celebration arrived as wedding guests took their seats in the serene outdoor ceremony. As the bride walked down the aisle, the crowds oohed and awed at her form-fitting lace gown. The couple kissed and became husband and wife with lush trees and peaceful water as their backdrop. The reception began as a buffet of Italian cuisine was brought out. Lasagna, meatballs, Caesar salad and breadsticks were served. The hungry guests dove in. After everyone had eaten, the lights were dimmed and the dance music began to play. This is your first dance as husband and wife. Which one of you is the criminal? All seemed to be going perfectly well until the local 911 operators became flooded with phone calls from the venue. 911, what is your emergency? Uh, I feel like there's some kind of drugs in me or something, and I don't know what's happening. Hi, I'm at this wedding, and I think I might be dying. I know my husband is lying to me, but he keeps saying I'm being paranoid. Please get here at once. When emergency responders arrived to the wedding, it was a bizarre combination of partygoers. People were smacking their dry lips together in a trance, while some laughed uncontrollably and others cried. 
A few guests were even loaded onto stretchers, thinking that they were having a heart attack or stroke. I'm dying, man. Officers were approached by a few wedding attendees, stating that they assumed the wedding food was laced with marijuana. When they questioned the newlyweds, the husband looked at the officers blankly and seemed caught off guard. Uh, no, officer, we did not authorize the caterers to add weed to our food. But his new wife remained silent, with a smirk on her face. Bride Dania Glenny, now Dania Subdova, and food caterer Joycelyn Bryant have been charged with felony violations of an anti-tampering law and delivery of cannabis, as well as a misdemeanor culpable negligence charge. The lasagna collected from the scene did test positive for THC, and it is assumed that other food items were also affected. If Dania and Joycelyn are convicted of these crimes, they could each face up to five years in prison, along with a $5,000 fine. It is not clear why the bride decided to drug her guests unknowingly. Was it because she was afraid her guests would be too lame without it? Or did she just desperately want to be on Live Laugh Larceny podcast? For now, all we can do is guess. But to all you listeners out there who are planning their wedding, take notes. Try surprising your guests with a dance number or a small keepsake. But whatever you do, don't surprise them with drugs. Damn, Dania. (laughs) That girl knows how to party, though. Exactly. I'm sure a lot of people, if you just told them ahead of time, they'd be like, eh, shit, why not? Yeah, I know. That's the problem, though. Obviously, I'm very pro marijuana. Like, I think it's totally fine and fun and great. But where I draw the line is you really shouldn't do it without telling people. Yeah. I'm all about people having consent of what drugs are going in their body. Mm -hmm. And like, what if somebody was pregnant or what if somebody, I don't know, there's all these different things. And like, I guess there were no kids at this wedding, I assume. So I did my story a little bit differently. Usually when we tell our stories, we have like the backstories of why they did it and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I kind of chose not to do it this week because really, obviously, I don't know. But I thought doing this way was just a little more fitting for the story for some reason. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like that there was kind of like the suspense of, okay, this is a normal wedding. And then bam, 911 calls. But... The 911 calls that I said in the story, the very first one that I did was literal word for word of a 911 call that came in. Nice. And the other two were real stories. They weren't like word for word 911 calls, but they were very real too. There was an older woman who was being really paranoid thinking that her husband and the rest of her family was lying to her and that her son had died. And she was freaking out with like really bad paranoia. And she went to the ER and the staff at the hospital actually had to give her a sedative to like calm her down. Damn. <laughs> like she was freaking out so much. And then the other one, people thought they were dying. There were people on stretchers. I mean, okay, <laughs> let's get it together. Like, yes, it's marijuana, but... When it's an edible, and if you don't know how much you're putting in something or, like, how to do it, you can get real high. Yeah. And especially if you don't know it's coming, you probably think, am I dying? Yeah, you think, why is everything feeling different to me? Yeah. Yeah. Like, can you even imagine not knowing and then being like, whoa, something's wrong. It's kind of like when you drink someone else's drink and you think you're drinking your own and you're before your lips even touch it. You're like, oh, I'm about to take a sip of water. And then. Even something like Pepsi will jolt your mouth in a different kind of way because yeah. you're you were already expecting something. Exactly. So it, it's almost like your brain does that same thing. If I'm going into a party expecting to party and I ingest something that's going to help me party, <laughs> right? I'm probably going to just be like, "Here we go!" Like yeah. on a roller coaster. But yeah, if I'm just like, "I'm going to eat lasagna," and, exactly. 
<laughs> and then the party gets started, I'm probably going to think there's a problem going on. I know. And especially because I'm sure there were people there that have never smoked weed, ingested weed at all. Yeah. And so I don't know. I don't know how the dosage was or how it was, but people were freaking out left and right. I bet. All the articles that I read said that the groom supposedly Mm -hmm. was not in on the lacing of the Italian food. I don't know. It's still a fairly new case, but if he knew about it, then he's just letting his wife take the entire fall, which is pretty dickish, right? If he knew about it, dickish, totally. Yeah. If he didn't know, I'd be like, do you want to annul this thing or exactly. like stop the paper from going? Like, what else will this lady do? I know. I know. I was even like trying to research, like, are they still married? I couldn't find anything about that. But there are a crap ton of wedding pictures and videos online. Lady looks totally normal. She's actually in her 40s, I think 41. And she's just a gorgeous woman, like mm-hmm. totally normal looking. And it's just bizarre bizarre to me and also i tried looking up did the caterer and her like have a personal connection is this her friend but there was no yeah no i just details. assumed they were friends or something yeah every single thing that i told in the story was as much detail as i could find it's very very i don't know i, I feel like a lot of the news articles were just kind of using the news headline and they didn't have a lot of facts of it yet yeah just kind of the shock factor of what happened exactly the- exactly so i'm like I just want to know, how did this conversation happen? And also, and I might be able to post some of this, there's body cam footage of the cops going to the wedding too. And the caterers are like quickly taking all the food away. And like everyone's all in a panic outside, like there's stretchers and people and all these things. And the cops are like, whoa, 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 we need to collect that lasagna. You know, they're like, don't put the food away. We need to test it. We hungry. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And the part that I talked about when the police talked to the husband and he was like, no. And the wife had a weird smirk. That was true, too. That was caught on the body cams. Wow. Well, gorgeous, loves the party. I'm sure he's happy he made his decision, as long as she's not in jail for a long time. That's the thing is, yeah, I wonder what's actually going to happen to them because even one of the girl's friends did an interview almost crying and was like, she should have told all of us, which Mm -hmm. I agree. I totally agree. Obviously, I'm very pro marijuana, so I'm like, it's not the end of the world. But I also do think that's pretty disturbing to give someone drugs without telling them, no matter what the drug is. Like you said, especially because the guests are a wide array of people. Yes, exactly. And you never know someone's situation. Mm -hmm. What if somebody is like going through the 12-step program? Or what if someone's pregnant and not telling anybody? I know I did that at a few events, you know? Had edibles while pregnant? (laughs) No, (laughs) God. I actually did um, ingest lasagna (laughs) made with THC. It was so weird. But yeah, so I had to do that story. I wanted to do it a little bit differently, just kind of as the build up. But I do wonder what the motivation truly was. Yeah, that is pretty wild. And also, I'd never heard of it. Oh, okay. I have two different wedding stories that I've been kind of sitting on. And I thought, oh, you're going to hit one of them. Nope. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Yeah. Just the idea of a petty crime taking place at a wedding or surrounding a wedding is really funny to me. Especially for the bride and groom. Because like, yeah. you think you're about to go to your happily ever after. Right when you're getting that finish line, you're off to jail for five years. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've went back and forth and I severely doubt I'll ever turn this into a personal story. But like, as you know, like at our wedding, we had to kick out my father-in-law for fighting with his his brother so jordan's uncle Mm -hmm. (laughs) so like i get it crazy things happen at weddings but yeah this one just really 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 shocked me it is really shocking i wish that i was a part of that party just to (laughs) think of telling people that story like everybody was like zombies and freaking out yeah the friend that they interviewed did say that there were a few people that were just kind of laughing like i said in the story just like sitting around laughing they're like we're all high you know Mm -hmm. and that probably would have been like our friend group or whatever but can you imagine our parents or like random people who aren't about that life like jeez. 
Oh my God. So yeah, what a time. What a lovely story. Don't do that at your wedding, everyone. You might go to jail. Yeah. As most of our stories are, they're things to learn from. <laughs> exactly. And don't do it. So I'm going to surprise you. Oh, okay. With a little thing. We're starting my story segment, everybody. My story is a personal story. Okay. And I'm kind of going back to doing a sort of story that I did once before when a certain realtor ruined my day. Oh, yeah. A very personal story that maybe focused more on the petty and uh, was just a way for me to express myself and how I was feeling. <laughs> it wasn't factual. Yeah. You just kind of went off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there were facts, but uh, his character was not quite probably truthful. Okay. I believe that was episode 17. Or 19, one of the two. Damn. It was Seriously Sinister After Dark, I think was the name of that episode. Okay. But anyway, I'm going to do a personal story. Okay. And it may or may not have something to do with how our episode started. (laughs) Okay. Can't wait. Because I just really needed a way to express myself. I've been holding this in and uh, had a couple stories already written. And I said, no, I need to let this beast out. Okay, let it out. So I will make sure that it makes sense for our show. Okay. But this is one of our more conceptual ones. Okay. So here we go. (laughs) We have all encountered some bad people in our day. There's the co-workers who choose to steal some of your creamer from the company fridge. The people who scream at cashiers trying their best. You didn't compliment my shirt. And those who just like to brag about their cars. I pulled my kid out of college just to afford this beauty. Every person that comes in contact with them is affected by their presence. Whether it be for that moment or for the rest of their lives, people naturally can't help but feel trapped by the company of these people. There is something about a normal, sympathy-having human that naturally feels alarm when these people begin to interact. I don't know if it's anxiety or just gut instinct, but we can sense that things are about to get uncomfortable due to these wild cards being introduced to the mix. The thing about these types is that in their own mind, they think they are doing the right thing, or at least the right thing by them. There's a certain kind of self-awareness that they just don't have. If you do not live by their standards, they are quick to demean you for not reaching their level of living. A lot of times, even their own internal set of rules that they expect strangers and the rest of the world to adhere to changes. Sometimes, this is on a moment-by-moment basis, or just depending on who's doing it. No one is allowed to cut lines, unless of course it's me with a coupon, they may think. Over time, people like this will band together to form a collective of like-minded individuals. This is a chance to gain strength in numbers to hopefully force others to live in their version of society. Pineapple should be banned from pizza. Eventually, they will become politicians, HOA board members, and even cult leaders. Any way to control is a small win for them. Meddling becomes their number one hobby as any moment of silence can trigger them to think, Somebody is probably minding their own business now, which is enough to ruin their day. They will spring into action, get a group of friends together, and pack a city council meeting. They may come forth with complaints like, people shouldn't be happier than me, and I was looking through my neighbor's window and they were watching a show I didn't like. Normally, the officials will shrug them off, but it doesn't stop them from trying. Today, I will be telling you about a particular couple that shares these qualities. A couple that, despite being the worst people on earth, are perfect for each other. So keep your grasp below six inches tall, never play your music above 65 decibels, and just get in line, because anything is grounds for a complaint when dealing with someone who's white and concerned. Haley was an absolute garbage person. She lived in a quiet neighborhood, on a quiet street, in a great school district. Although she didn't have a kid that lived with her, 
She felt it was important to know that she lived where the kids had more privileges. That didn't stop her from viewing every kid around her as an absolute menace. Menace! You see, Haley didn't have much of a life. Serving as a bored housewife who had a job working from home, she had nothing else to really keep her mind busy. She hated pets, she had no friends, and she was generally lazy. Living a mainly homebound existence, she became very interested in the people around her. Think of her like James Stewart's character in the Hitchcock movie, Rear Window. Except she wasn't in a wheelchair, she was just a lazy asshole. Every day, in between handling calls for her job, she would stand out on her front porch and puff away on cigarettes, as her lungs would fill with the fire of a nicotine stick. Her soul would also fill with the fire of curiosity. How long has Margaret's Jeep been parked in her driveway? Sure would hate for her to have it sitting in there for an unacceptable amount of time, she thought to herself just before pulling out her cell to make an anonymous tip. As she lit up her second cigarette, she looked up to the north side of the street. Down the street came a young couple pushing their child in a stroller. What is their motive for always walking down my street? She asked herself while pulling out her neighborhood notepad. Checking her watch, she began to log the young couple's walk time. Hmm, 20 minutes later on the walk from where they were yesterday. What are they plotting? Haley jotted down her suspicions, in case this information could be useful later. She then went back inside to make Facebook posts about chemtrails and how the president is a lizard man in a suit. After hours of standing still and staring at a wall like some kind of possessed character from paranormal activity, the front door finally opened. In walked Haley's husband, Donald. Donald! Haley screamed as she wiped the drool from her chin and ran to give her sweaty husband a hug. You won't believe what happened today. Margaret is hoarding cars in her driveway, and I found out that the young people up the street are the leaders of an anti-sandwich cabal. They want to discontinue bread and make everyone eat tortilla wraps for lunch instead. Donnie, I'm so scared. Clearly being a huge fan of sandwiches, Donald justified his wife's ungrounded claims. What kind of lunch would that be? We can't have them taking sandwiches away from us hard-working Americans. I'll make sure to come home from the opposite direction from now on, so I can keep an eye out for any of their meetings. This is a free country, and I won't stand for it. Donald was one of those stupid, bumbling husband types that you usually see in a poorly written commercial on network television. You know the type. The kind of guy who reaches into his wife's purse and says, Oh, a candy bar and pulls out a tampon just before the wife snatches it back, explaining that it isn't candy, while then slowly looking at the camera and whispering to the audience, he'll never know. There just wasn't a lot going on upstairs for poor Donald. Even if he did have much of an original thought in his stupid brain, Haley would usually steer him away from them. In Haley's home, what she said goes, and thanks to Donald being a big brain dead idiot, she would weaponize him for her dark bidding. The two sat out on their front porch, cheers their freshly lit cigarettes, and looked over their fair street. So tell me more about the street I've lived on for years, my dear, Donald said. Well, Donnie, I didn't want to alarm you, but our newest neighbors, two houses down and across the street, I heard their dog bark. Donald gasped for air, almost inhaling his entire cigarette. This can't be! Honey! I know you hate animals and people's incessant shows of joy. I know, Donnie. That's why I wanted to wait before I told you. Not only do we have younger neighbors, but they have a dog. The two held each other in a warm embrace of fear and leftover bacon grease. I go talk to them, Donnie said. No, you're not very good with words, my sweet little stupid, Haley said. I'll do it. Haley left her husband on the front porch as she went to talk to the neighbors in the blue house. Looking back, she saw Donald start to whimper. He didn't know what to do without his master present. He then sat on the top step and began to lick himself. Knocking on the door, 
A young brunette woman answered. Hello, I'm your neighbor up the street, Haley said. I just wanted you to know that the barking is an issue. I'm not too bothered by it, but there's an angry old man up the street that has been threatening to report you. I just wanted to let you know before it happened. The young woman apologized profusely and explained that she was working on training her dog and she is a new dog owner. As a couple of days passed, Haley was sitting in her garage working on her third attempt at a voodoo doll of her ex-husband. She had always felt that voodoo was against her religion, but she also felt the Lord would make an exception for her. As she carefully placed a lock of her ex-husband's hair on the top of her self-made cotton doll, she heard a faint dog bark in the distance. Whoa! Haley wailed as she over-exaggeratedly jumped, causing all of her arts and crafts supplies to fall off the table. That dog has got to go! Haley quickly grabbed the black sharpie that she was using to draw her ex-husband's cold, dead eyes and began to write a note. Can you please put your dog inside? We don't want to hear it. What you are doing isn't working, clearly. Talk to him again. Haley stood back to admire her work of art. Sure, it had a lot of punch. The excessive use of underlines, caps, and exclamation points were very aggressive but it just wasn't getting the message across. Aha, she yelled. I'll gaslight them and make them think that all of her neighbors are talking badly about them. Unfortunately, the bold point Sharpie she had used took up most of the paper. There was no room to write anymore. Haley then dug in her pen drawer and got out a more fine point blue marker and signed the letter from the entire neighborhood. Now that's what I call keeping the neighborhood safe, Haley said to herself. She then rocked back and forth on her hands while speaking in tongues until Donald got home. As Donald walked in, Haley handed him the letter. I have a job for you that doesn't require you using your stupid words. Go put this on their front porch somewhere, but make sure you stay far away from their ring camera so they don't know it's us. Donald saluted his master and commander while sneaking off to tape the paper to the neighbor's porch. A day later, Haley looked through her window and watched over the street. The young woman in the blue house walked out her front door while carrying a bag. She watched as the young woman went door to door, talking to neighbors and handing them small bags. Eventually, the young woman began walking towards her house. Haley braced herself for contact as she heard the doorbell ring. She rushed to the door and quickly opened it. Hello, I just wanted to tell you that I'm really sorry about our dog. We are training her and working on it. Here are some cookies I made. Haley snatched the cookies up and began to angrily reply. No, she's gotten worse. The young woman was taken aback by this quick shift from how nice Haley had been before. We got a note on our porch last night, signed by the whole neighborhood. I've gone and apologized to everyone, but they don't seem to know what I'm talking about. In an act of cowardice, Haley replied, Oh, <laughs> that was probably my husband. He had talked about how he might do that. The young woman looked at her suspiciously, knowing that the handwriting was indeed female. The two looked at each other, knowing that there was an unspoken distrust between the two, mm. until the young woman thanked her and walked back home. The confrontation was so much that the only way Haley could calm down is if she went to YouTube and watched a compilation video of dog deaths in movies. She took a sigh of relief while watching the kid put Old Yeller down and the scene where Will Smith loses his dog in I Am Legend. First my family, now my dog? <sighs> That's better, Haley said. Within the next week, Haley had heard another dog bark. Without even knowing whose dog it was, she quickly dialed 311 and contacted Animal Services. She left an anonymous tip that there was a dog in distress at the blue house. Maybe that will get that dog taken away, she said to herself. Months passed and things had gotten better. That is, if you were to view the situation from an objective standpoint. But Haley did not live in the real world. Anytime Haley heard a dog bark, she would find new limits to her boiling point. On a particular Monday afternoon, Haley heard a dog bark for upwards of five minutes. 
it was time to come out of hiding and get back to bullying the neighbor. As Donald got home, there sat his wife, chain-smoking and weeping. I can't take it anymore, Donnie. That dog was literally barking all day. It's affecting my work from home, and it's stressing me out. I need you to scare them into making a change, once and for all. Donald knew just what to do. He knew there was nothing scary about a man with a low IQ and a sweaty beer gut. But there was something that automatically struck fear into the hearts of others and demanded respect. His big Dodge Ram. Donald got into his large penis mobile and made the long drive, two houses down. He got out of his truck and walked firmly up to the blue house's front door. Pressing the ring doorbell, Donald wasted no time. He began to walk around the house to check the windows and property. As the door opened, there stood the young woman's boyfriend, standing at six feet tall, sporting a blonde undershave, and equipped with a razor-sharp jawline. Donald was expecting to deal with a woman. He usually feels much more confident in bossing around females. He quickly took two steps down, stared at the boyfriend's feet, and began to speak. Yeah, I'm your neighbor just up the road here. Is there something we can do about the dog? She's barking all day, and it is affecting my wife's work from home. The young woman's boyfriend was very understanding and apologized. We're trying to work on training her, but we limit her time so that you are less bothered. The spirit of Haley began to course through Donald as he began to take a page out of her book. You're allowed to let your dog outside. You can let her outside as much as you want. I just don't want her barking. The younger man began to process the fact that Donald gave him permission to let his dog out, as long as it was on his terms, until the young woman emerged from behind him. Um, yeah, this is about the dog. I haven't even been home all day, and the dog was outside for about 20 minutes. She wasn't out and barking all day, so that's just not true. Donald began to trip all over his words while avoiding eye contact with either of his opponents. The only woman that speaks to Donald P. Dickbag is his wife and no one else. Okay, Donald said in a sort of a, I'm going to get back at you sort of way. He then got in his truck, started the engine, revved it up, and made the long drive two houses down. The people in the blue house watched him making the long drive back, where he greeted his smoking wife. The two each shared a cigarette while they pointed at the blue house and complained. They were so mad, the only thing they could do to calm themselves down was to complain about a black little mermaid on Facebook. I take my anger out on children's movies. The next day, while the dog was not even barking and no one was home, Haley called animal control to send complaints about a loud and barking dog. Even though there was no literal complaint at the moment, she had been stewing over the confrontation her below average husband endured the night before. She sat on her front porch and smoked as she watched the animal control people check on the house again. In August of 2022, two absolute assholes continuously abused the Kansas City Animal Service Division for personal problems. Feeling that a small 15-pound Shetland Sheepdog's booming barks were too much for their home's insulation to soak up, they felt it was in the city's best interest to handle their specific frustrations. The KC Pet Project Animal Service Division helps over 14,000 pets a year while also getting numerous homeless animals adopted to loving homes. They take in many volunteers all to help animals. It is the efforts of this large animal-loving community that keeps the streets free of strays, and our homes full of love. I have a huge respect for everything these individuals do, as they are who I adopted Boots from. The KC Pet Project Animal Services Division is not there for your own personal petty acts of retaliation towards neighbors who bug you. The volunteers do not risk rabies and animal bites just to work for free and make sure some privileged white person in a quiet neighborhood isn't annoyed. They do real and important work. As this is still ongoing, and Haley and Donald are shortening the leash of what they will and will not accept of their neighbors. We do not quite know how this will end. The Animal Services Division will take time and investigate every call, no matter how unwarranted they feel it is. So the more these two get offended and lie, because someone disrespected them on their street, the more good-hearted volunteers will be kept from doing the real work that our community needs. Maybe not quite a crime yet, this is certainly petty, 
and a total abuse of one city's resources. Let this story serve as an unrealized petty crime against humanity that you may have never thought of, while also a chance for me to express my anger towards these two idiots. You can all thank Emily for the story, because she wouldn't let me order a bunch of horse shit to their address. Was that really what you were thinking about doing? Oh, I had so many different ones. Oh my God. So what I wanted to do, my main one, was because her problem was the sound during work. Right. I wanted to put a sign in front of their house that says, honk, it's my birthday. Like during a work, <laughs> <laughs> during work hours. I also thought about getting on like a Facebook group, like a local one and saying like, oh, there's a sick kid in this room and he just really wants to see a parade of cars drive by. And I was going to try to get people to drive by and like honk and stuff while she's trying to work. I thought about there are companies that will bake glitter cakes made of shit. Oh, my God. (laughs) And we'll send them the houses. Now, it's very odd the rules of how this works, because apparently the reason why it's illegal to ship shit to people (laughs) is because it could have like diseases or whatever. Yeah. But these companies can't clean it and make it okay and make it pretty and whatnot. However, they say you can do it anonymous, but I feel like that kind of a company would still be pretty quick to say who did it. Yeah. They said that if it is in a harassment kind of way and you get caught, you can still get in trouble for harassment. So I thought, man, I'm not going to do that. I I have thought about (laughs) just having an air horn and going out at certain points during the day and just, (laughs) which that's still on the table. But I've had a lot of different thoughts and things I really want to do. Oh, my God. I will say there's one part of the story that I did keep out during my dreadful dilemma which i think i've told you about this to help get into character of this woman Mm -hmm. there is something else that she's done that i have not talked about when emily and i were out walking the dog one night it was probably like 10 30 and we were just walking on our street and a car came up behind emily and i slowly behind us and started flashing their bright lights at us ew and you know i've kind of got some light ptsd issues i wasn't really triggered by it or anything but I still thought this is incredibly odd. And I always, every time I walk the dog, I'm always like, I hope nobody messes with me. Yeah. The car kind of followed up behind us slowly and then finally came up beside us. Well, it was Haley, quote unquote. And she said, oh, it's just you guys. I just thought you were some kids that need to get inside. What? And I thought, in your mind, is this normal? Is this a normal interaction? Because you're not the street police. What the hell? And the weird thing is, we were like two houses down from her house on the opposite end. So she had drove past her house to do that to us. Not only that, after she went around us, she continued going south all the way down the street to where we couldn't see her anymore. I think she was doing patrolling, patrolling the whole street and then turned around and then came up and then went home. Oh my God. Duh. So I am making up a lot of stuff about her, yeah. but I do believe that she has nothing going on, and that she does think that she needs to be the voice of this neighborhood. Yeah. Which, one other thing I was thinking about doing to be petty, and this isn't even all that petty because I do kind of worry. Yeah. But I thought I should call the non-emergency police line and just say, hey, we were out walking and this woman harassed us for walking. There's a lot of kids that live around here. I bet a lot of these neighborhood kids have had run-ins with her. And I bet she's come by and told them what they need to do in the street and everything. And it's like, okay, if Emily was out by herself... I guarantee that would have scared her. Yeah. I don't want her to do that again. I don't want her to do that to kids. Yeah. No, she sounds definitely a little on the um, mental instability side of things. Mm -hmm. It sounds like little tiny things bother her a lot. And she feels the need, like you said, to be in control of everybody's movements, which is really bizarre. Yeah. I mean, my God, I have had very weird things happen recently these people that live across the street from us who i don't know their names i never talked to them ever they've had the cops over there like three separate times recently and like something clearly has been going on with arguing or something Mm -hmm. but i'm still not going to write a letter or complain or do anything and that's like a literal concern right there yeah for somebody to be going so Above and beyond for people walking in the road, for a dog barking who, I mean, you guys can tell, has Mabel barked at all this whole entire time we've been recording? Like, she's not even like, I know we're inside, but still. 
And she's so a little weird. dog. Yeah, she's so small. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. Yeah, this lady seems like she's off her rocker a little bit. But you had me honest to God losing my shit <laughs> when you said that she was on her hands speaking in tongues. <laughs> I was dying. I wouldn't put it past her. I actually forgot that she had done all of those things in the past. Like, mm-hmm. you've told me about each thing, but I forgot that it's literally been, like, the fourth time now that she's done something. Because she came over once, then she left the note, then she called them once, and then she called them again, right? Yeah, and her husband came over. She might so have even came over a times. second time, too. Jeez, okay, so I guess I just forgot just how many interactions you've had about this thing. Yeah. But it was such beautiful storytelling because as someone who has heard everything, and also I'm pretty sure you've you've talked about this in the past with our listeners. Mm-hmm. I've talked about the note before. Yeah, but for something that like I already know what the story is and to still be intrigued of what's about to happen <laughs> next, that's some good storytelling right there. Thank you. It was <laughs> definitely angry. Yeah. But I just had to express it and... You and I are like trying to get stuff together for this trip. And I thought, yeah. pause everything. I need to write this episode. Like exactly. I can't use the two I've already got written. I need to put this in now. Yeah. And I'm so proud of Emily and the way she's handled this. Because mm-hmm. when Emily and I first lived in our old home, we lived in kind of a weird neighborhood. And one time we had a package delivered to our front door that wasn't ours. She said, what do we do? And I was like, well, just walk over to the neighbor's house. And she's like, well, when you get home, can you do that? And I thought, it's not that hard. But, you know, she was just you know, nervous, you know, had never, she's shown so much growth in this whole thing because she's like mama bear. She loves her dog. Yeah. She wants to protect her dog. And this woman is making it hard on us. And Emily went door to door. Yeah. I forgot about that. And I don't know if I talked about it on the show. I apologize if I am repeating myself, but she went door to door apologizing to everybody. And most of the people were like, huh? What are you talking about? Why are you saying sorry? But thank you for the cookies even the grumpy old man that the neighbor tried to pin it all on was a grumpy old man but yeah he, he basically was like what what do you want who are you you yeah. have a dog i don't care go away <laughs> and like <laughs> right emily put up with all of that social interaction just to try to clear our names and be liked in this neighborhood because yeah. we're trying you know i don't care if they like me but i like i don't want people to hate me yeah exactly i like to try to make is less of a splash in the world as possible. Yeah. But like, come on. No, I honestly forgot about that. That's really sweet of her to go door to door and put that effort out. Like you said, a person who was concerned, you know, even about delivering a package to then go to everybody and make them cookies. Like how freaking thoughtful. And she was really making the effort. You never knew which door was going to open and somebody be like, oh, hell yeah, I got a problem. Yeah. Like, you're basically just you're getting ready to take a up. lash from somebody. Exactly. Like, you're that's a very vulnerable position to be in i mean think of all the mormons that are constantly going door to door (laughs) (laughs) but no i mean come on the whole thing is so ridiculous and yeah i think that there comes to be a limit of how long you can be nice when someone is coming for your family and yes i'm a person who has human children and fur baby children and if you mess with either of them there's going to be a problem. Right. So, yeah, I totally, totally understand where she was coming from with have a nice day, motherfucker, because like there's only so much I can take. Yeah. I was just going to try to keep it kind of nice and just whatever. Yeah. But the second that she popped in and was like, um, no, you're yeah. wrong. I thought, oh, we're going this direction. OK, yeah. from now on, that's my way, too. Yeah. Because I wanted to be an asshole, but I thought, let's just try to keep it on even, you yeah. know, even ground. I don't think she realized it when she did it because she was like, oh, I'm going to find her on Facebook and tell her I'm sorry and see if we can work out a schedule. And I said, you made this fragile man feel disrespected and he went to her and that probably just pissed her off more. I said, if you open up a line of communication through Facebook, yeah, people like this have much more to say oh, when they can hide yeah. behind a screen. I was like, she's not going to say, oh, I think so. I appreciate it. She's going to be like, she's gonna no, go and off. here's something else I want. And then you're going to hear from her all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, don't open that line. You pushed it. We are not friends now. Yeah. And so I said, we need to do this the smart way. Mm -hmm. Like a lawyer, we're going to have all the stuff we Mm -hmm. can. And what I want to do is I want everyone to know that these people are just getting out of people's business. And what I want is them to look like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. And for Casey Pet Project to be like, oh, is it you again? Right, right, right. Click. I'm not going to check on this because you're wasting our 
resources. Yeah, no, you make a great point. I mean, good God, there's so many other better, more important things that they could be doing. But yeah, I just think that this story is wild and I really hope it doesn't continue. But from everything you've said about this lady, I, I kind of feel like it might. I think it might too. Like I said in the story, I feel like the leash is getting shorter mm-hmm. and there's still going to be something that's going to trigger her no matter mm-hmm. how much you walk on eggshells mm-hmm. for her. Yeah. And honestly, I'm proud of Emily for giving some sass because like I said, you both are very, very considerate human beings. Mm-hmm. You both don't like to create feuds. So when I know either of you are upset with somebody, and also she's been, like you said, the one dealing with it. So like Mm -hmm. she's talked to them multiple times. She's gone door to door. She's done all these things. So finally, now that they're coming over again, she's probably had it, right? It's like a broken record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, I've dealt with you how many times now? So I get it. And I'm really sorry. Sometimes neighbors just freaking suck. Not all of them can be awesome neighbors like Bob and Martha for me. I love Bob and Martha. Never met them, but I hear such good things. You know what's so funny? I talk about them a lot on the show, right? All good things Mm. for anyone who's ever listened to any of the other episodes. (laughs) The other day... Jordan mentioned to Bob that I had a podcast and he sent it to him. So I oh. don't know if he listened. I don't know. But I immediately started cracking up laughing when Jordan told me that. And he's like, what? And I was like, I've talked about Bob and Martha <laughs> so many times that Trevin even knows their names now. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, it's all been good. I just think it'd be really funny (laughs) if Bob actually listened and heard me talking about him so much. You're like, hey, I'm a stay-at-home mom. These people are basically my best friends now. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. They're like our next-door neighbor grandparents. Like, they take such good care of us. Oh, I love that. Jordan's mower's been broken. Bob, like, lets us use his mower all the time. Like, they're just so sweet. And I wish, I wish, Trevin... That maybe one day your bad neighbors get replaced with someone like them. I hope so, too. I will (sighs) say over the last couple nights, every time we've walked out to go take Mabel for a walk, I'll see them both on their front porch smoking and they run inside before we even walk in front of their house. Really? Yeah, because I keep thinking, am I going to spout off? I might do it, but then I never get the chance because they always hide. Yeah. Well, keep that intimidation and keep that confidence. Don't stop your guys' life of your walking patterns, your life patterns, your dog needing fresh freaking air and to go (laughs) to the bathroom for these assholes. Just document everything like you're doing. But I really hope that you guys just keep living your life and try not to worry about them because... You've gone above and beyond. These people clearly have very sensitive souls beyond. And And, a grudge. Yeah. And they're very resentful and grudge holding, which is like a horrific combination. So just do you. And sometimes people are going to hate. Yeah. I mean, if all else fails, I'll just take a day off and get perpetual eviction back together. You know what? (laughs) We might have to set up a band in their front yard this time. Rock out her work day. And if you want to give me an air horn... When I'm at home, you know, during the week, I can just make a loop. Random times during the day, I can take different cars each time I do it. So she can't spot me. I'll be like, Dad, I'm borrowing your car. Jordan, I'm going to take this. I'm going to do that. You tell me (laughs) if you want me to, and I will. (laughs) I ain't against it. I'll buy your air horn if you want. (laughs) Yeah, I might just need a gas allowance, even though it's going down. (laughs) It's worth it. Oh, God. Well, what a great time. The connection was really hard for this one. There were a few, though. We both had phone calls of people making complaints in different ways. Grass, quote unquote, was mentioned in both, Mm -hmm. even though I never described it as grass. That is a common nickname for marijuana. You talked about keeping the grass cut short. That one's kind of a stretch. Also, both stories were kind of motivated by the women in the couples, where the guys were kind of just like the mindless puppets going along with the ride. That's true. I like that. So I don't know what you want to say or what you want to use, but sometimes women be tripping, you know, like not all the time. We love women around here. I I love a powerful, independent woman. I love them. I love them too. I want to raise powerful women in my daughters. I feel like I'm one. I feel like I like to surround myself with them. But, you know, 
most of the time it's men that are kind of wackadoo. But the, hey, you know, women aren't all perfect either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wackadoo knows no gender. <laughs> it's just sad that... That's a really good title. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sad that one happened to get more of the stereotypes throughout history. Yeah, 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 for sure. So that is our episode this week. I've been really having a great time on our show. I hope that our listeners are continuing to do so as well. For all the new listeners, if there are any, the hello, because we are recording so far ahead. It's just hard to know. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what is time. Right. Where are we? What's going on? But I hope everyone has a great week. And just remember, no matter the crime, big or small, in the end, we're all doomed. Doomed and keeping those nuisance dogs inside. <laughs> Bye. Woof. <laughs> Thanks for listening to our show as you make your spit art on a window. If you have any photos of you bathing in salad dressing, send them on over to our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Live Laugh Larceny. And if you have ever drugged up an entire party without them knowing it, send us your petty crime story to livelaughlarceny at gmail.com. And give us the opposite of a noise complaint with a five-star review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Good Pods. As she carefully placed a lock... As she carefully placed a lock of her ex but. As she carefully placed a lock of her ex-husband's hair. Oh. <laughs> ex-husband's hair. We are like struggling. Oh my God. It's not even a fucking tongue twister.